if you are very new, what, what I want to recommend to you is go to HackerOne. There are a ton of different programs you can hack on. There's two sides of this bug bounty thing. Before people in the comments who are bug bounty hunters come after me, please bear with me. I always say this and I always get chased because of it. You shouldn't be doing a lot of work for free. I, I'm not a, I'm not saying go and give up your, you know, your free time and work for free. What I'm trying to say is go hack on programs that are not being hacked on by the pros, by the top million dollar hackers, by the full-time bug bounty hunters. If you're brand new, focus on learning. And I personally think that learning is a lot easier with programs that don't pay you. A lot of people are gonna come after me, the top bug bounty hunters hate this piece of advice, but it's real. And I've done this with a lot of my students who I teach, people that I've mentored. I tell them, go hack on a program like GM, Department of Defense, because hackers like me who spend a lot of time on these programs aren't hacking on them because they're not paying bounties and I'm doing this for money. Um, so let's go to IBM, for example. What I just showed you right here is very important for IBM. IBM is saying IBM products, we don't care which ones, as long as it's owned by IBM. It could be IBM.com or any other websites or domains owned by IBM. So you can do what I just showed earlier and find a list of all the big assets and then go after them and find these websites that you can self-register. So if IBM has this developer sites that's like for businesses, for example, sign up, go on there and look for vulnerabilities. Next thing, find this like expense site that could be self-registered. Make an account. The self-registered sites are the best because there's a reason why they require you to register and have an account. Go on there, look for bugs, look for IDOs, look for XSS, look for um, SSRF, whatever you're good at. Make a list of the top three things you want to learn and learn them while hacking on programs like IBM that have a ton of assets and a ton of the top hackers aren't looking at them either. So in other words, you're saying because the competition is so high for like paid programs and the guys with lots of experience are already there try and go somewhere else where they're not spending their time and your likelihood of finding something is better is that kind of the reasoning correct that's exactly what it is it's just um be a program like yahoo don't get me wrong if you can hack on yahoo great awesome make your money no one's going to know to make money but it's going to be a lot harder because they've been around for years if you go to these directory pages there's a lot of companies on there and a lot of people are looking at them but with a company like IBM, it's so huge that even if the pros were looking at them, there's so many assets that you can't even like test them all at once. You can't automate a lot of it. In life, you got to pay often for education. Sometimes, you know, you got to put in the work before you get a return. So I can understand the logic of what you're saying. It makes sense. Uh, Department of Defense, another good one. Who doesn't want to hack the government? They have assets that date back to 2008 eight that are still online for some god awful reason. You just gotta find them. You see, this is one of our top hackers, CDL. He's still hacking on uh, the problem of defense. If you go to his page, you can see he's check marked. He's one of the one of the well-known hackers out there. He's a really good dude as well. Very smart. You can see he's hacked on PayPal, Epic Games, Yahoo, but he's still going strong on the Department of Defense too. I do these kinds of programs for research purposes. If I want to make a case for a research, they're a great place for practice. And I still go to them. And I think it's like you said, I mean, if you're young and you want to get a job somewhere, putting that on your CV that you've hacked the Department of Defense is going to look really good. Absolutely. And they can see here, if we go right here, all hackers, they can see who these hackers are uh, and they can verify that you have hacked on their programs before. I got my first job. So I did contract work for a while as a security engineer. My first job was purely because I hacked that company. I sent a report to them and they, they gave me like a product for a year for free and I ended up working for them because I had hacked on them. But on my resume that I submitted for uh, the interview, I had exactly this. I'd hacked some of these free programs and I said I had found XSS or SQL injections in these programs and I had listed them. And that was a great way to show experience because I've hacked real companies um, that have real products out in the world. And it's a really good way to showcase your experience as a hacker as well.